All right, we're back. Let me close the door. <laughs> another day in heaven. Um, another dance is my business. Today, um, we have a good friend, Jose Serrano and Maya, which are going to share their story and um, their experience. And my God, so much more. We already spoke to them once. It was on IG and it was really good. So we wanted to see um how would that goes by bringing them to facebook as well and jose is here so let's just not waste time and um hey araceli welcome thank you for joining all right here we go three two one Everybody's waiting, Jose. How's everybody doing, guys? It's almost Friday. It's almost the weekend. Here we go. Hey, Moche. How we doing? What's up, buddy? Everything good? Everything is great. Everything is great. Where are you guys at? I'm actually at Maya's house. We were... Uh... About to go rehearse, but um, the time difference, you know, three thirty. Like, of course, you're gonna go rehearse. What else do you do, right? Um, uh, to all of our friends that are joining us right now, I just want to say really quick: we already had this live session with Jose and Maya on Instagram. Uh, what is it? A week or two ago, and it was so good, and we correct. went over so much, like good material, good content, very valuable advice that I, and, and we couldn't record it. We couldn't save it because it's IG and then it disappears. So we said, we got to do it again. I'm going to take you from your studio and from your practice time. And, um, right. and we're going to bring it to Facebook because I think it, everybody would really enjoy I uh, hearing from you guys. So hi to everybody, everybody that is here, Jonathan and Araceli and Jose and DJ Joey and Ernie, of course. Hi, hi Alexis. Hi, Daniel. <laughs> All right. So thank you so much for joining us again. I'm very excited. I want to go over everything we already spoke about in our last live feed and more. But first, as always, who you are, what do you do, so everybody uh, know. So first of all, this is Rue right here. We love him to death. He comes everywhere with us, but most of the time. So we'll see like that. And this is Maya. Why do, why do I have a say something? I don't know. And my name is Jose Serrano, and uh, we've both been dance partners a little bit over two years now and we live in chicago you live in chicago and how long you've been dancing um, that's a good way to start for two years, right? two years is that how long i've been dancing yeah how about 30 i think 30 33 years 33 years 33 wow. years and you look 35 what age did you start um, I actually have pictures of doing a perfect performance uh, since I was a little kid, uh, five and six years old. So I was one of those little kids with fruit fruit arms. And then my sister, when she became like 10 or 11, uh, wanted to be a ballerina. And then we joined a ballet studio and I've been doing one, two, three, five, six, seven ever since then. I, I think a lot of people know you, but not too many people know that about you, that you've been dancing for Correct. that long. Um, yeah. Well, normally when I explain to people, it's almost like put, um, I literally remember seeing myself being nine years old, staring at myself in a mirror, and I grew, and I remember myself turning 11 and 12 and 13 and 15, and I was still inside the studio. 17, 18, came to the United States, 19, 20, became a semi-pro dancer, and 2021, became a professional dancer, still looking at myself in the mirror the entire time through my entire pro career, which uh, just for the record, I was a former principal dancer uh, with the Columbia City Ballet. So in other words, a professional ballet company. Um, and I did that for 10 years. I had a 10 year contract and we did a lot of shows a year. And then after I left that world, I came to this world. And now we do how many events we do? Last year we did, we were gone 46 weekends. 46 weekends last Oh my last God. Year. Wow. So just to give you an idea. Um, a little bit more background in me, like I have everything from classical ballet, including jazz, modern, and all that good stuff. I also do a little bit of aerial silk. I also do pole dancing. 
Um, haven't done that in a while, but used to. but used to a big used to. Uh, it hurts a lot, by the way. Yes, it does hurt. Um, I competed in ballet and non-ballet competitions and modern in my genre and stuff like that. I was also on So You Think You Can Dance. Uh, the last year that they, the age limit is 27. So like two years ago, I competed in So You Think You Can Dance, right? Not, not really, right? Um, and made it to the finals to Vegas and stuff like that. So I've been in the competition world and the performance world ever since I can think. You have a resume of, uh, that every dancer would love to have. This is just amazing. Uh, uh, Maya, how long you've been dancing? Two and a half years. <laughs> Two and a half. This is long. Yeah. <laughs> Two and a half years. And before, I... yes, go ahead. No, no, no. I just wanted to say for the people who are not watching us or don't know you, you are only 17. So this is like, not like you're 40 and you're just dancing for two years, you know? So, okay. Hey, Fernando. Hey, also. Hey, Carlos. Camilo. Camilo. Hi. So, yeah. So, I've been dancing for about two and a half years. Before that, I used to ride and train and compete and show horses, which is definitely a completely opposite and different world than the dance world. Dirt to rhinestones, pretty much. Um, and I got into it because my mom, she social danced a little bit, and we ended up moving from Indiana, which is where I grew up, to Chicago. Um, first it was just part-time and then it ended up being full-time, especially when I decided I wanted to dance and pretty much I went on social dancing with her and one of her friends and I was the girl at the table sitting there on her phone, texting my friends being like, oh my God, I want to get me out of here. I hate all this. And Jose was there teaching a club class and he came up to the table and would bombard us with questions like why are you not on the team what team you're in blah, blah blah how old are you and i was like i'm 14 years old like leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> then yeah after that and we started training so both of you definitely have uh, more experience than just salsa or bachata you've been trained um classic and uh in my yeah. and, and in your case gymnastic right nothing no horses horses nothing. horses, horses. horses. So it's really funny. She she says it. It says she says it that she trains horses. The way I like to explain it is, imagine a horse that somebody wants to sell for competition, but their horse doesn't obey. It doesn't jump. It doesn't stop. It doesn't sit. It doesn't obey. So this person right here used to train that horse to obey the rider. That's what she used to do. In a very do. nice and good way. In a nice way, and then sell her horse. And that's that's what she and Maya did. Them, and so just to put, like if they were going to the kill shelter or something, I would. Correct. And just to put people in perspective, and I always love to ask this question: How much does a horse weigh? They can weigh anywhere <laughs> from four hundred pounds, which is the baby ones, to like two two thousand. Two thousand pounds. So this girl right here was training two thousand pounds. That that basically explained how you guys get along. She she got yeah, you to yeah, obey yeah, and understand yeah, what needs to get done. If she can train a horse, she can train this horse right here. A hundred percent. So that being said, uh let me switch really quick. <laughs> Back hi, to Cindy. Go ahead. What? No, I was just saying hi to people. Hi, Cindy. Everybody watching and saying hi. Hi, Tony. A lot of good friends are watching, and, and a lot of questions are already in, and I'm going to ask them in, in just a few. But first, um, I'm going to go selfish. Um, what do you, what's your take on people that just learned salsa and bachata and how important it is to learn other genres of dance as well? Well, yeah, exactly. I mean, at first it depends, you know, like what you want to do. Like if you're a social dancer, you definitely want to take classes. Normally what happens is, uh, like Maya, for example, you go uh, and uh, I call them civilians, by the way. A civilian comes into the dance world and they're like, oh, wow, what is this? This is cool. And then they do it for fun. But then they realize that their inner selves want to get better. And they're like, well, what, how do I get better? They're like, oh, they teach a class here. Mm -hmm. And then that person goes and takes a class. And then that person then finds out that, oh, wait, it's not just like music and bouncing and moving forward and back. I actually, there's like a technique to it and stuff. Oh, okay, sounds great. And then that person becomes a social dancer. And then normally what happens is the director or the teacher asks that social dancer to join a team. And then once they join a team and they get on stage for the first time, that's where I think this key of cross-training other techniques comes in handy. Because once you take a social dance that goes on a dance floor of a nightclub or an event, 
onto a stage, now you're talking about lines, you're talking about quarter bra, you're talking about chest up, you're talking about opposition, you're talking about epomans, yeah? Different, different things that a normal social dancer class does not give you because the social dancer class um, is only based on lead and follow, right? Mm -hmm. Not expression and performing and stuff like that. So that's why I always encourage everybody, take your ballet class, take your jazz class, Take your modern class, you know, within the modern era, there's Graham, there's Horton, there's a Paul Taylor technique, there's different techniques that help a lot of people in all these different genres. So I always recommend people to take ballet class and technique classes. Absolutely. That's amazing. What other benefits comes from learning uh, ballet and, you know, more than just the actual technique? That's, that's, yeah. That's a great question, and I emphasize that a lot in my workshops. For example, uh, at a Latin workshop, salsa or bachata, normally what happens is the instructor warms up the class and then teaches a turn pattern. They teach normally one combination, either a combination of shines or a combination of a pattern. When you take a ballet class, you're actually learning in one hour, I want to say a minimum. Of, or any type of class outside or, the Latin world. Or any type of class outside the Latin world, a minimum of 15 patterns. So your short-term memory from the technique class to the Latin class actually expands. Mm. When I train my dancers here in Chicago, I actually give them not one pattern, not two patterns, five patterns. Wow to actually make their short-term memory a little bit longer. And I train that from my dancers so that when they go take class, they're like, oh, I'm just learning one pattern? Okay, done. Wow. You know, a lot of people ask me all the time, Jose, how come you grab a, a performer from an event on Friday, rehearse Saturday, and perform Saturday night? How are you able to do that? And the answer to that is, because my short-term memory, I believe, is a little bit longer than the average dancer because I'm so used to doing that. I'm so used to mo getting different levels of choreographies in my body. So my muscle memory absorbs it quicker. So a couple of years ago, I decided, I was like, I wonder if I can train that. How can I teach that? So I started pushing the envelope. I started doing two and three patterns. Um, I believe at your event, at, at your event, if you look at the turn pattern, it was actually a six-bar pattern. But normally it's a three to four. One, two, three, five, six, seven, two, two, three, five, four, two, three, five, six, seven, finish. Wow. You know, some push it to eight and twelve. And in the class, everybody's always like, Yep, keep going. <laughs> and then we add Maya, and then I say, Maya, make it look good. And then she does styling, and everybody's like, Do, do you it think again. do you think that the discipline and the mentality from ballet dancing and other classical dancing that you brought into your salsa and bachata dancing helped you? Oh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, especially the mentality of training. Um, this is something that's actually very important. The first ballet step that you learn as a little kid is something called first position, okay? First position is something that you learn as a little kid. A professional dancer that's getting paid $1,000 a week in New York City Ballet, for example, their first step that they do every day in class is still first position. Wow. I find Latin world, people do learn basic, they work at basic, and once they do it, they never work at it again. Mm -hmm. In my class, I actually don't. I drill in my advanced class, we start Corby body. One, three, five, seven, basic body. One, two, three. Then we move. In bachata, the same thing. Step, 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 tap, slow. We work on basics and fundamental until it becomes part of you. I always like to break it down to the point of like, I need you to understand your own basic, basic 100%. And that's something I took from the ballet world into this. No, world. Of course, and, and on paper, and everyone who danced for a while would agree with it's you 100% um, as right. far as like going slow and steady and really work on your fundamental. But how do you explain right. that to somebody that come to a studio, pay for a month, and he's like, hey, I want to dance like crazy in three months from now. And that's a good case. Right. In most cases, it's tonight. Yeah. It is. It is. And, 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 you know, I get that question a lot from my students. For example, one of the first thing I do is self-awareness, right? Mm -hmm. The student comes in. He wants to be a super master a dancer in three months, for example. You know what? I let him pick a course on how he wants to do that, right? And then two and a half months, right before his end, 
I go to him and I do an assessment. Be like, where are you? Where do you believe you are? You did three months your way. Now, can we do ourselves a favor? Let's do three months my way. And let's compare your way with my way. I'll create a syllabus around you. I'll create a syllabus around the fundamentals and technique that you need to work on. Musicality, movement, synchronization of musicality and movement, improvisation. How can you actually pull out moves? And these are things that I actually do, and not just verbally, I make them write it down. Wow. And you mentioned musicality. How big of a part is that in, in this process? Oh, it's huge. It's huge. Um, any pro dancer that's probably watching this and knows me very clear that I always say, for example, um, let's say you have a routine, okay? And you're having trouble, I don't know, with a section or whatever. You know what? Grab that section and write the counts down. One, two, three, four, and five, six, seven, eight, one, and three, four. Write it down and read it and see if you can say it to the music. And if you can say, see it, then you have to do it. And then what you say, see, hear, and do, that becomes a part of the sensory memory and it's going to help you. That's great. Um, Maya, this is a lot. Musicality, fundamental, <laughs> uh, spinning. Uh, how do you catch up with this guy? <laughs> I, I, I don't. I don't think I, it's going to take a long time to catch up with him, but I, I take in what You're I can. You're doing pretty well. Your shows are freaking amazing. So basically, my question is, how, how is practice with him? <laughs> what does um, it take? It, it takes a lot of keeping myself contained and just... Patient. Yeah, a, lot of, a lot of patience <clears throat> and a lot of knowing that what he... A lot of trust, too, and a lot of trusting that what he's telling me and what the information he's giving me and the um, corrections and whatnot, that they're all going to come out in the end. And they do. And a lot of times, like, there's never a time that I'm like, wow, <laughs> that, that, that was for nothing. There's, uh, there always is a point that I'm like, okay, that's exactly what this is for and that's what that was for. And I always see it in, in the end. But it's tough. It's worth it? Yeah, it is worth it. It is. It definitely is. I mean, if I didn't love it, I don't know that it'd be worth it. But, <laughs> I mean, it's definitely tough, though. I'm not... Guys, keep posting your questions. I'm going to get to them in yeah. just one second. Jose, one of the things that we talked about last time, it was so good. I got a lot of comments about that. Um, for most dancers, especially the students and the new ones uh, to the scene, uh, tech rehearsal is a place where you go, you see your friends, you let the DJ know that you're coming tonight and you go home. What's tech Correct. rehearsal for and how do you approach tech rehearsal before your show at an event, Congress or ADC? Correct. So tech rehearsal for me um, is very different. It's not a rehearsal to practice on stage. That's not what tech rehearsal is. Tech rehearsal is that so that you know where backstage is, you know where you're entering the stage, if it's stage left or right, you know where the center is of the stage, you know how far downstage is to upstage, which is the edge of the audience stage versus the back curtain, and you know where the lights are. And the most important part, you know where the sound is. So it's a technical rehearsal about the awareness about the stage where you're going to be performing at. Some people use tech rehearsal as a dancing space to rehearse. That's <laughs> not tech. This is when you're doing as a couple. When you're doing a team, for example, tech rehearsal is whoever's my center line, they know where center is, they know where quarter is, they know where eighth is. That's different marks. So center, quarter, and eighth closest to the edge of the stage on the outside of the stage. So then you tell the formation. Uh, for example, when I run my team, I say, who's my head? Who's my leader? Couple three. Okay, couple three, you're downstage center. They know exactly where to go. Who's my point in my diagonal? Couple two. Couple two, you on a quarter mark up downstage. And those terms mean something for them. So I don't have to be on stage going, move a little this way, move a little that way, down this way, down that way. If you actually teach your dancers the technical aspects of the stage, they understand a different vocabulary and you move faster. Uh, th this is great. I mean, I hope everybody's taking notes. This is literally like the the Bible for, for being a professional dancer um, and a lot of valuable information, like some of which I didn't, I didn't even know in like all these years, including owning my studio, my dance studio. Um, 
how do you feed prof like let's give some comments here to all the dancers that really look up to you guys and look up to you Jose and all of your years in business um how do you explain uh and what's important as far as professionalism and also being a part of the event more than just the show on stage and the workshop correct um so me professionalism as an artist or a student that's performing as an event is simple stuff number one have a costume that looks professional rhinestones dance shoes and uh, now we're doing urban stuff like jeans and stuff like that but still make it look like a costume right does that make sense number two the music make sure that the music is tested don't download the music for something buy the music make sure it's high quality give it to the DJ in, in enough time does that make sense and number three be courteous and nice always know that tech rehearsal and, the, and doing the show things happen you know maybe somebody was late and you you have to go before somebody told you and you're not ready now always be ready always be ready and number four this is a personal for me I'm I always carry a spare costume for a guy and a girl well wow. never know when somebody needs a show and there you are with costumes Maya <laughs> yeah. uh-huh Jose, can you perform right now? Absolutely. Let's discuss price. Let's go. You have a costume? Absolutely. The, the right this right is here. this is crazy. I don't know how many people like you exist, but <laughs> but but this is seriously uh, as professional as one can get from the approach hey, from the approach to dancing to approach to practice to the approach of tech rehearsal. Now, what about beside work, being on stage, teaching a workshop? And performing um, um, being a part of the event and representing Perfect. what do you do to be involved in the scene and to get everybody here on this chat and so much more to know you because you do more than just putting a good show so for me when I'm part of an event just like you said I mean I've been doing your event for almost 10 years now or if not 11 I always forget last year was 10 years right you've been there before me that's for sure yep <laughs> <laughs> Um, one of the things that I take my my personal approach is I always work for an event almost if I own the event, right? I promote the event because I want the event to be successful. Because if the event is successful, that means that I will always have a job. If the event is not successful, next year the event is not going to happen, so I won't have a job. So I need I do everything in my power to make that event successful. To, I treat every single person that hires me like if that event was my event. I'm like, no, this is why it's good. These are the reasons, and this is where we're going, and this is specific event is for this, this, and this. This event is for this, this, and this. And I treat it like that. I treat it like it's my event. For example, like ADC, I tell everybody, ADC's experience to me is unbelievable. It doesn't matter if you're on a dance floor or if you're inside your cabin. You're always at a party. That's the experience of ADC. All the events are events for learning. All the events are for team meetups. All the events are for the social dancing. All the events are just for great shows. Every event has something different, you know? So awesome. advice from an artist to other artists is know your events. Know your events and know your organizer, organizers and know what their vision is. Yes, ticket sales. Yes, you want to good. But what is the vision? What is the vision? That's very important. And how, uh, and how can you make that vision? How can you be part of that vision and help it out? I think you just got hired for like five more events by saying all of that. <laughs> um, Maya, you mentioned patience and hard work, and this is so rare to find that it's like, let's, let's call it what it is, that it's like in a 17 years old kids nowadays. Sorry, Charlie, I love you, my sister. <laughs> love you, Charlie. Love you. What would be your advice to um dancers your age which nowadays i see more and more and more of you know people start younger and younger um what did you learn from jose what did you learn from your experience what would you recommend them to focus on if they really want to travel 52 weekends uh, uh a year well first of all i would say make that make sure you want to make that decision first of all um, but second of all, I would say the biggest thing to focus on is you and if you as long as you're focusing on you and taking as many classes as possible and always working to make yourself better and not really worrying about things uh, outside sources that are around you, even though they can be intimidating or inspiring too. If you're always working on yourself that nobody or yeah, nobody can take that away from you. And the more like 
it's not going to do anything but take you higher and to keep you pushing and to keep you fresh and always and always find something new too. always see how you can take something and make it different and make it your own. And that way you're always not outdoing, but always keeping something unique about yourself and making sure that you stay different or relevant. So even if you're like upcoming, then people will still look at you for a certain reason. And then until they have every reason to look at you, but always just work on yourself and focus and trust yourself and trust your coach and trust that it's going to happen and work hard. Don't slack. Amazing. Don't slack. Awesome. Thank you. So first question from Natalie, uh, what are good Latin clubs in Chicago? Latin clubs in Chicago. So the, uh, one of the biggest Latin clubs in Chicago is on Tuesday nights. It's called Alhambra. Um, on Saturday, I believe, is Dylan's. Um, Thursdays, I believe, is Reverie uh, by Latin Street. Um, there are studios. Uh, Latin Rhythms have studios. Latin Street has studios. Socials. Um, Ray is... Uh, the Bachata Socials that have like 500 people. Oh, Bachata Socials by Tim. Huge... Tim does a social here. I believe, well, like, I love, bachata. I love bachata, like, every three months. And they get between three and 500 people. Like, it's amazing. They have, like, three rooms. So, yeah, Chicago has a lot. Kizomba scene is huge here, too. Mm -hmm. And Zook. There's a bunch of Zook dancers here. Yeah. A bunch of socials of Zook dancers as well. Yeah. There's so, a lot of Facebook. Bachata too. Legacy. Sorry, I forgot Ray's studio's name. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Ibrahim C., uh, is asking how many hours a week of practice do you suggest to your, he's capping your students who are performing your choreography creations? That's easy. Just rehearse eight hours a day. It's not that hard. 24? <laughs> oh, eight. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's very simple. Yeah. Um, and for real note, I always tell people that you should always, always just do minimum of like 30 minutes. Let's say that you rehearse on Tuesdays. Okay, you rehearse Tuesdays for three hours, but every day that you're not rehearsing by yourself, put the routine song, pretend like you're partnering the person with your eyes closed, the lady the same way. Visualization. Yeah, go run it through your head, visualize the routine. You think that that's, some people say, oh, that's the waste. I don't have a guy. No, if you do that, your brain will you're visualize not dancing it. the routine in your bed when you're trying to fall asleep. It's definitely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> like. Need, yeah. I, I listen to songs over and before I do choreographies, like Maya would be like, oh my God, we're going to listen to the song again. I'm like, yeah. Whenever we drive, I And drive repeat. Somewhere. Like if I have a three hour drive, the same song in a loop again and again, I want to write down the counts of all the weird hits that the song has. You know those mute songs, those, um, I'm sorry, you know those routines when you see them, they do like a hit and you only hear the hit when you see a movement, right? Right. Love those. Those those musicality, you have to find them in the song. Right. You know, you're like, oh my God, I've heard that song a thousand times. I never knew it went ring until I saw them do it. That's amazing, right? Right. As a choreographer and for other choreographers out there, I suggest you write your song. I sit down and I, I, I wish I can sh I show you. Like, I sit down and write down the counts of the music, how it sounds to me. One, two, and three, four, and five. And then once I have a pattern of counts, then I put movement into those counts. Nice. So, what do you do from a, uh, like, from a physical point to stay in shape and not get injured uh, and, and be, you know, so uh, strong for so many years, dancing, lifting people up, flipping, and everything else that you do? <laughs> so definitely cross-train. Um, you know, gym, all the things that you hate doing. Gym, abs, train your yeah. hands, eating healthy, um, uh, a lot of people don't train their arms in a supportive way. What do I mean by this? Um, a lot of people do exercises of strength, but they don't do exercises of like holding. For example, I make my dancers hold their hands. I'm going to get up right now, right? I don't know if you can see me like this. Like this. Yep. For 45 minutes. Arms open and you just keep them open like that. Okay. Correct. The so, hardest and worst, most so painful thing ever. If every dancer is mine is watching this and I say dancer height, arms in second, they know they're about to cry. Yeah. Right? And it's not stuff that is hard, but it's just a different training. Like, for example, when you're on stage, your arms are always lifted. You're always working your hands, right? 
but it's not about strength. Can you hold your hands like that for two minutes? Wow, amazing. So it's not just training that. It's training in the right way of dance, not just training of like, oh, I have good abs or good muscles. It's a training of dance. It's a little bit different. And stretching too for girls. And stretching for girls and guys. You have to be flexible. You can't be yeah, doing – you can't. I've seen guys do a dip and they can't do a lunge because they're not flexible. So they're like, you know. Wow, a lot of questions are coming in. I'm sorry. Um, no, 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 no. A lot from uh, uh, your family member and our great friend Charlotte. She is asking, I, I, what was uh, your first reaction when you were invited for ADC for the first time? And then, what would be the advice that would you give to yourself, to your younger self? Um, da, 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 da. if there is any advice, something that you would learn. Yeah. The advice I would give to my younger self is save money. <laughs> That's a good one. If you could have gone back in time and... and if and I go just... back in time, I like mean, I grab $1 a day and save it. Put it somewhere. $1 a day doesn't seem like a lot, but if I would have done that between That's 18 such a... and right so 40, true. whatever, I would have had... Almost a million dollars. You do the math. One dollar a day. Save money. It doesn't matter what it is. That's the number one advice that it is. The number two advice I would give is eat healthy. Eat Take healthy. Care of your body. Take care of your body. Drink water. Hydrate. Sleep. What? Oh, sorry. I'm going. Charlotte is like, boom, boom, boom. like a lot of questions. Uh, your most challenging routine and questions. your favorite. Um, and what was the other question? What was your reaction and your feelings the first time you were called to be on ADC? Oh, uh, okay. You take my job. I'm out. <laughs> Before we go, to, okay, just go. Let's go to that question. Cool. Yeah. So, I mean, the first time I got hired to ADC, I remember um, it was uh, Royal Caribbean Cruise. So, we didn't have the whole ship. If you remember that, right? We had only a small section. And I was actually a little bit honest. To be, I was confused because it was a different concept. I was like, wait a second. You're doing a Congress on a ship. How is that going to work? I was so confused until Friday and Saturday night party. And then it all made sense. I was like, look, I get goosebumps. I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. And I don't know if you know this, but Nettie and a bunch of other dancers, um, we're, we were all in the back. We found this little hall in the back, and we started social dancing back there. And at first, it was five people. The next you know, it was like 30 people back there. And it became like a little crowd. And still to this day, that's exactly what you see at ADC. You see all these people from different parts of the world all getting together, and you don't even know each other. and You just have a great time. And I, I think... I think that's very magical. Since that think... time, we haven't been on Royal Caribbean, and we're going back uh, in three short months, and I'm very, very excited about that. We're still well, 30 people. Um, <laughs> what <laughs> recommendation would you have uh, to increase flexibility? Araceli is asking. Oh, my God. That's a Maya <laughs> question. I know, right? That's really tough. Obviously, all bodies are different, but... To me, a lot of it was a mental thing. So when I first started, I've literally only been dancing for two and a half years for the people that didn't hear that. And when I first started dancing is when I was stretching, when I didn't know much was when I was stretching the most and when I was getting the most results. Um, I was stretching three times a day for like, I would say an hour each of those three times a day. And like, in ten, I mean, like I would sit there and set up my, and not nothing, Seriously, nothing very hard or something that you need to have a lot of knowledge for. I would literally sit there and set up my phone and record myself, and then I would go sit on the couch, be like, okay, that's not screenshot perfect. I need to go back and make it screenshot perfect right now. And I would literally do it right there. And was that very healthy and the best way to do it? No. <laughs> but it happened. And I like people always ask, oh, how'd you get your splits? And blah, blah, blah. I got my splits in literally three days. So they asked me, he's like, how do you, do you have your splits? I was like, no. And he's like, you need to have them. I was like, okay, sounds good. So I got them. <laughs> and now, I mean, I would say a lot of it is a mental thing, but the more, I mean, just sit and stretch before you eat. Put in the so work. Yeah. yeah. 10 minutes, literally 10 minutes, nothing. Put on two songs, make a playlist, two songs, sit there and stretch, do something new. It doesn't even have to be the yeah. same thing. Just do it. After... I don't know. Go to work during your lunch break. Sit on the floor and do it. And you got to put in the work. You can yeah. read about push-ups as much as you want. At some point, you need to start doing them. 
Yeah, correct. Just to add a little bit more technical stuff to what Maya said. Um, of course. Um, number one, you want to warm up your body. You want to heat up your body. For example, for guys, I always recommend getting heating pads and put them on your thigh. And girls, too. And girls, too. I not listen to this. One. Like, put heating pads on your, on your legs to make your legs hot. Um, you can use Bengay or some sort of cream to create more blood flow to the area that you're stretching. More blood makes the muscles smushier. It makes it you can stretch more. And it makes it so you don't strain them as easily. Correct. And number three is recovery, too. Remember, every time you stretch, you're tearing your muscle. You're literally going, <laughs> you're tearing it. Then it has to be time to rebuild and then stretch again. And then the last thing is pain tolerance. And this is important. That's more what I mean, too, of the yeah. mental thing. The importance of pain tolerance is a normal person, let's say from level one to five, five is, is a lot of pain, like a paper cut is five, okay? As a normal person, you have to push that into a six or a seven and know that it's okay to hurt five. Oh, I'm okay. I didn't get injured. Five. Okay, so today I'm going to push six. Oh, Okay. I'm going to push seven. Oh, okay. I'm going to push 10. Does that make sense? Raise also your, your pain tolerance. We, we can have a lot of pain tolerance. I always tell ballerinas, um, look at their feet. I'm pointing. Does it hurt? It hurts every time. But we have pain tolerance. Does that make sense? Wow. We know how much is going to hurt, and we're okay with it. A lot of all great... Dancers, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. I was going to say, all my dancers, when I do the dancer height pose with the hands to the side, they know it's going to hurt. And I tell them, so what? It's just pain. It's just pain. It's you, just, it just hurts. It's a cramp. Again, choose if you want to be in this. I was like, you can either be a dancer or you can just sit down and go home and watch Netflix. But if you want to be a dancer, this is what it takes. No. So. Netflix and chill or Netflix and spin with Jose Serrano. Um, speaking of spinning, um, spin. we have a question here. How do you get uh, your spinning up to like 10 and up? And, you know, how do you build this? Spinning, um... First of all, you have to train. This is one of them. Besides balance and strength and core and drive and push and opposition, these are all keys, okay? So these are all keys and fundamentals in the body that you need to spin. But besides all of that, there's one more thing that's very important, and is the eyes, okay? The best way that I can explain it is, uh, you know in the phone now that we can do a uh, par panoramic picture oh, good job. Yeah. panoramic picture right we can do a pa panoramic picture okay mm -hmm. now when you spot and you spin your eyes your brain is not used to that feeling because as humans we don't do that so you also have to train your eyes to be able to trace around one time two times ten times sometimes people train one time or two times and they expect to do multiple turns I make my dancers not just train once or twice. I have an exercise called clock turns that I make them do for an entire song. So think about it before you call Jose Serrano. Um, <laughs> re <laughs> I'm going to ask you one more quick question. I mean, you gave us so much uh, so, like valuable advice, good information, and I hope people really um, enjoy it because I did and learn from it. Um, for fun, Beto is asking, what was your, uh, so you think you can dance experience like? Oh, my Swedish dance experience, like, uh, experience was, uh, was great. It was, a, it, I think it was either season two or season three. Uh, the funny part is that I was at a salsa club in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I met, um, I think it was <laughs> Beto. Beto was actually watching earlier. Beto and another female dancer, they were auditioning for this show. And they're at this club, social dancing, where I am. And I actually didn't know about this show. There were some dancers from my school that were going to go to something. I'm the from the ballet company. I normally don't really pay attention to, like, you know, in my free mm -hmm. time, I just want to unplug from dance. But it was so happened that it was in the same city that I was. And I was like, well, when is it? It's tomorrow morning. I look at my clock. It's already 4 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, well. Let's do it. I just I go eat breakfast and I went. And when I went there, there was thousands of people lined up outside to go audition for this thing. Uh, just to put it in perspective, at this point, I was already a professional dancer. I was a principal dancer. I already made it. Like, I was just curious. And then I go in, and the audition process is, is crazy. They line, up, they line up 10 people at a time, and you have 
five seconds to impress the judges. My God. They go like this. At least you, back then. At least back then. You, forward, dance. Okay. You, forward, dance. Okay. You, forward, dance. Okay. You, you, you. Made it. Everybody else, thank Now, you. as brutal as it sounds, there is a reason why five seconds is more than enough, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Why? Well, because you can tell in five seconds if the dancer has technique, if their level of balance is good. You can tell fundamentals. You can tell bone structures of the body. I can tell you just by looking at somebody and the way they walk onto their position, how they're going to be. You can tell, um, I always say this, humans step on top of the floor. Dancers step through the floor. Wow. And you can tell when a good dancer is about to come on stage and do that because the way they walk, the way they walk, they walk through the floor. They don't walk on top of the floor. That's great. I mean, with all the loves that you get here with the comments and people mentioning <laughs> that because of you, they dance the way they dance. I really think, and Kevin is watching us, uh, on ADC, you need to have a meet the coach session uh, <laughs> where people, uh, no joke, when people come, ask you question about being a dancer, professional dancer, perform. Yeah, like, I really like that idea. Talk and talk and ask questions. That sounds great. I, 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 I think a lot of our dancers uh, can... Charlotte, of course, our routine. Do you have a favorite routine? Charlotte, always our routine will be the favorite routine, which is Moche's favorite routine, the yellow routine. Yes. With the feathers. <laughs> yeah. Um, I agree. One of the best ADC routines that we ever had. And, um, yeah, I think a lot of dancers can learn from you and continue learning from you because you inspire and, and, and you help so many people. And this is something so amazing about you guys and you, Jose, because um, – the appreciation in the scene for what you do on and off the stage is out of this world. Um, how can people stay in touch with you, ask you questions, follow you, and Maya? My Instagram and my Facebook, actually, are just plain Maya Sandok, M-A-Y-A-H-S-A-N-D-O-C-K, on both Instagram and Facebook. Follow me, message me, anything. I'll respond. And me, Facebook as well, Jose Serrano, and I believe on Instagram, which I kind of use a little bit, uh, Serrano Dance, I think it is. Jose Serrano Dance. Jose Serrano Dance, yeah, you know me. I use Instagram all the time. If you ask me, it's fun. Jose, are you on uh, Snapchat? Yeah, oh, I do have it. I've used it never. Never. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for your time. And I'm very serious about Meet the Coach session on ADC because I think um, okay. a lot of people would, would enjoy it. And continue traveling, continue to do what you do, be uh, great. And I'm looking forward to see you on the ship. Sounds great. Thank you, Moche. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, everybody, for watching. Shout out. See you, Jonathan. I'll see you, everybody. Love you. Take care.